Corn, or maize, is one of the most important crops in the United States and around the world. There are currently many varieties of corn, such as field corn, popcorn, flower corn, sweet corn, and baby corn. Most of the corn grown commercially is a hybrid of two different inbred lines, from seeds that must be regenerated each year. Since maize is an open pollinated species, pollinations in a field will be random and unpredictable. Some varieties of corn are bred with cross incompatibility genes to prevent cross pollination on the farm. This is particularly useful, for example, in growing popcorn to keep other maize varieties from reducing the popping quality of the kernels. To breed new varieties with improved traits, or to maintain the integrity of popular cultivars, corn breeders have developed a simple system for making controlled crosses that can work at almost any scale, from a backyard garden to a large-scale breeding and seed production operation. The scientific name for maize is Zaya maize, and it is diploid with 10 pairs of chromosomes. It evolved through artificial selection from a wild grass in Central America called Teosinte. Teosinte still grows in the wild today, and maize will naturally outcross with this species. Maize is diclinus because it has separate male and female flowers. Maize is also a monoecious species because both male and female flowers are found on every plant. The male flowers that produce the pollen are at the top of the plant in a structure called the tassel. The anthers start producing pollen grains as they emerge from the glooms and the pollen is dispersed by the wind. The female flowers that produce the seeds can be seen on the sides of the plant and are contained in a structure called the ear. These flowers collect the pollen with long, specialized stigmas called silks. Each silk leads to a single egg that grows into an individual maize kernel. Making controlled crosses can be made easy with a few pieces of simple equipment. Brown paper bags are used to collect pollen from the tassels, and small, white, glassine bags protect the silks from foreign pollen. The bags are treated to resist rain. You'll also need a permanent marker, a sturdy stapler, and a small blunt knife. A utility apron will keep all of this with you out in the field. The female flowers are the first to emerge, and their silks must be protected from foreign pollen. They first appear as shoots that grow out from behind some of the leaves. The first and uppermost shoot to emerge will usually produce the best ear. It is important to cover the young shoot before the silks emerge. When you have found a sturdy shoot, tear off the blade of the leaf in front of it by pulling downward. The solid edge on the closed end of the bag can be pushed down behind the chute to make a slit in the lower part of the leaf. Open the bag and slip it over the chute to keep pollen from falling on the silks when they emerge. The slit will hold the bag in place. As the tassel matures, anthers gradually exert themselves and begin making pollen. A good tassel for collecting pollen has some anthers already emerged, but many still waiting to emerge and produce fresh pollen. You should also make sure that there are silks to pollinate before putting up your bags. If the silks take too long to emerge, you can speed up the process by cutting off the tip of the husk with your knife. Pollen is shed mid-morning and in the afternoon when morning dew has evaporated and the temperature is cool. The pollen only lasts for a few hours and is difficult to store, but this can work to the breeder's advantage. By putting a bag over the tassel, all of the pollen inside of the bag, whether from that plant or from another, will be non-viable by the next morning. The only pollen that will be viable will be what the plant produces that morning. First, the brown tassel bag must be clearly labeled with the genotypes of the parents and the date. By convention, the genotype of the female flower receiving the pollen is put on top and the male underneath. It is easy to remember if you think of the old adage, ladies first. Labeling the bag when you put it up helps you keep track of your crosses down the road, and the date can help you tell the difference between bags you just put up and bags put up the previous day. Place the bag over the tassel, fold in half at the bottom, and up from the bottom diagonally, which will keep the pollen from falling out. Staple the bag to keep it in place. If the stalk seems too weak to stand up to the wind, you can fold the bag around the uppermost leaf to give it stability. The next morning, when pollen is being shed by nearby plants, tip the tassel bags to the side and hit them a couple of times to release the pollen from the anthers. 
Then remove the staple and take the bag off without letting the pollen fall out of the bag. To pollinate the silks, remove the white bag protecting them and quickly dump the pollen on them. Place the labeled tassel bag over the ear and staple the back two corners together on the other side of the stalk. Leaving two corners of the bag free will allow room for the growing ear. Now you're done with your cross. When the ears have fully matured and set seed, they can be pulled off the plants, rolled up inside the labeled bags, and set somewhere to dry. Large operations often have seed drying facilities to make this process go faster. Hybrids of two inbred lines of maize are often larger and more productive, a concept known as heterosis, or hybrid vigor. Once a desirable hybrid maize cultivar has been developed, the next step is to accomplish a controlled cross on a field-wide scale. To do this, several rows of the female parent alternate with a single row of the male parent. A specialized detasseling tractor is driven through the field, removing the tassels from the female rows, leaving only the male rows to produce pollen. So every ear of maize that grows on the female plants is a cross between the two parents. Male sterile varieties can be used to make controlled crosses. However, this method is not as extensively used in maize. It is widely used in other hybridizing crops such as rice and onions. The seeds from the female rows of these large-scale crosses are collected and sold to farmers to plant the millions of acres of hybrid corn that are grown across the country and around the world.